Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the solo from Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix. It sounds like this. Okay, so hello and welcome to this Little Wing solo guitar lesson. I'm Thomas and in this video today I'll be covering in, t in full the outro guitar solo that Jimmy takes at the end of this track. I just want to say it's such an amazing solo, I think it's one of my favourites and it really shows what you can do with one position of the pentatonic. This is all this is, a couple of extra notes flown, thrown in here and there. But overall, it's just minor pentatonic, and it, it, it plays it so wonderfully. Hopefully, you can take something away from this solo. Okay, guys, before we get started, don't forget to comment and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this lesson and you want to see more, please click the link below to take you to our website, where we've got loads of different songs, and we'll have this song in particular in some more detail where you can read about. Okay, so let's get started. We're in the key of, annoyingly, E-flat minor. Jimmy did this thing where he picked higher gauge strings and then tuned the guitar down a half step. So we're playing an E flat minor, but to him he was playing an E minor. He was playing in what we would see as E minor. So I'm going to do the solo in E flat minor. One, because it's a slightly different key for a lot of people and might give you a kind of chance to expand, spread your wings. And two, because it'll mean you can play it along to the song, whereas if you're playing it in E minor, it's going to sound pretty ugly. So. We're in our good old fashioned minor pentatonic position, starting from the 11th fret. I never get tired of hearing that. So this solo is almost entirely in this, and it's really amazing what he squeezes out. So the very first note you hear is, well, it's a big harmonic, which of course I can't do because I'm in regular tuning, but for him, he plays it on the 12th fret and then Whammy's his guitar. I won't do that because it's not going to sound right, but just so you know. So the first note of the solo is this bend. So that is, with my third finger, on the 14th fret of the B string, that's a full bend. With some vibrato as well. That's really good practice, by the way. See if you can just hold that bend and vibrato that out. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then the next is, is that bend again and then released. So bend, bend again and release back down to the 14th fret. Okay, then we're moving to the 11th fret of the B string. And then hammer on back to that 14th fret. Okay, one more time slowly, bend, bend again, release to the 11th, pick again, hammer on to the 14th and pull off, okay? So we're left hanging on that note, then we've got a bend again, same bend from the 14th up to the 16th, this time faster, up, down, and then onto the 11th of the G string. So. Up, down, and then 11th on the G, okay? Followed by another bend. This time, second finger on the 13th fret. I'm all out of whack here with the C flat. The 13th fret, bend up to the 15th. Okay, here's, here's the trick now. You gotta use your pinky just as you're bending that to play the 14th on the B string. So this is not easy. And as soon as that note hits, you've got to cancel or mute the note that was on the previous bend, okay? This is tricky. You hear that this note will stop. 
So the way to do that is, is to just try this. Bending up and killing the sound before you hear a release. And then some right hand technique will come in useful as well some left hand technique to mute this. So right hand, I'm just gonna try and stop that note from kind of ringing out or even from hitting any other of the strings. Then my left hand, I'm not going to move my hand away. So I'll put this closer so you can see. Bend. I haven't lifted my finger off of the string. I've just stopped pushing it up. I've taken the pressure off both from pushing it down to get, a, to get a note and from pushing it up to get the bend. I've taken all that pressure off, but I haven't moved my finger and that will stop the string itself from ringing out, okay? So that's how you do that. It's not easy, especially getting your pinky in the action here. And then after that pinky, it's the bend up and then release. Okay? So, we've got to here. What follows is then, first finger on the 11th of the G. And you do this triple bend. So, play the 11th, second finger, sorry, third finger onto the 13th fret, and it's bend without Picking it again, bend, bend, bend. So it's just bend it up, release it, bring it back up, release it, bring it back up. That's why I love this solo. It's such a master class in bending and just control over the techniques on the guitar. Okay. And that last of the three, you're going to slowly release that. Okay, before playing the 11th on the G and resolving to the 13th on the D. So we'll take it back. Okay, so we've got roughly about half the solo done now. Again, this isn't a fast solo, but just so much technique and so much control. It's such a great lesson. Please, if you haven't learned this solo, do watch to the end of this. You will absolutely love it and you'll get great lessons and just great practice out of this. Okay? Now, following that resolution we got to on the 13th, back to the 11th on the G, the first finger, and another bend, third finger, Bend in the 13th and then immediately back off to the 11th fret without hearing a release of the bend. Tricky technique again. So it's not this where you hear it come back down, it's up and then immediately off. It's just about getting that micro movement of bending up, releasing it, and immediately playing that without hearing that. So bend, then my third finger is gonna come off immediately, directly to my first finger, before playing the 13th fret again, okay? So, That's how it goes. 11, 13, bend, straight to 11. And then hammer on from first finger to the third finger on 13th. And then second finger on the 13th of the D. First finger on the 11th of G. Second, third finger, sorry, on the 13th of G. So back from this resolution. A 
lot of legato ham-ons and pull-offs here. Hopefully you've got all that. It can be a little bit tricky. Go back and re-watch if you do need. So we ended with that hammer-on. And then we've got a slide from the first finger on the 11th fret of the G to the 14th, sorry, the 13th. slide right away, really strange. And then a hammer on. And then after that hammer on, so we hammer on to the 13th, slide up to the 15th, slide back down to the 13th, then off to the 11th. Slide up, slide back, pull off, and then a bend. So pretty much the same notes again. So slide, we'll take it back actually. Okay, slide, slide, pull off, then bend from the 13th of the G up to the 15th. Bring it back down and then play the 11th. So 11, bending then the 13th, bending it down, and then playing the 11th again. Okay? So I'll go over that one more time. So there's our slide after the pull offs, so after the hammer on. Slide and then a hammer on again. So he's played the same two notes three times in a row. First it was a hammer on, then a slide, then a hammer on again. Crazy. Then a slide from the 11th to, sorry, a slide from the 13th to the 15th. Back down, pull off to the 11th. Bend 13th. Back down and then to the 11th again. Okay, following that. Now we're moving to the B string. We're going outside of the pentatonic for the first time to the 12th fret of the B string. So in preparation for this, I'm barring just across the 11th fret of the G and the B. Then with my second finger, I'm pulling off from the 12th fret of the B to the 11th. Three, two, three, and then playing the G string. So. And before we get to that little bit, just back to that bend we did just before, your first finger is gonna be in that 11th position, so don't move that away. Just keep it there and flatten it out so you can play both those two notes. And then one, two, three, off to the G string. And then third finger coming to the 14th of the B string. And it's the same bend that we started out with. Bending up. Okay, so we'll recap that. Starting from this crazy three hammer on, slide, hammer on, slide, slide down, pull off, bend, down, off, flatten finger, and then. So following this, we've got this bend up, and then we're going to do another bend, bring it back down and come off to the 11th of the B string. So, bend up, bend up again, back down, then to 11. Okay, now this is where it gets a bit hairy. The first time I heard this, I had absolutely no idea what was going on. So what this is, is you're bending with your third finger, bending the 13th of the G, and then with your pinky, put this close so you can see, with your pinky, that's going on the 14th of the B and the E string, flat across, so those two notes. And you can 
hear that kind of note come in where it matches those two. This is really hard, really hard. The way to practice is make sure this bends okay. You can do that happily. And then just try getting those two separately. Then these three, so you'll put your third finger where the bend is happening. Once you can play those, brace yourselves and Okay. Really tricky, but really cool technique. And that'll work again in any key in that first pentatonic position. So it's bend, strike, strike on the B and the E. Then bend again, and then strike, strike. Okay. Now we're going to take this exact same shape. So don't move your fingers. We're going to move this down two frets. So your pinky's now on the 12th. And we're changing it around a little bit. So now that we're here, it's B string, sorry, high E string, B string, then G string, followed by the bend. Before bringing the bringing the band back down and then off to the ninth on the G string really really difficult two bars I think that's actually one bar you never knew you get so much into one bar Slow that right down until you can really comfortable with each individual movement and then just slowly slot it all together. So we end it here, then we're moving to this little chord shape. So this is pinky on the ninth fret of the D string, first finger on the sixth fret of the G string, second finger on the seventh fret of the B string, okay? And then he's using his third finger to hammer on on the G string to the eighth fret. And what this is actually is a triad. So that's the triad of the chord that's happening underneath in the song. And he's using this as a way to create dissonance before resolving it to that triad. So the triad being one, three, five, those notes of the chord, that means that the original shape he's got before the hammer on is one, two, five. So he uses a go two to three and kind of make that now we're home. So he does that a lot and it's a hammer on and then a pull off. very different ways and you hear that throughout his playing a lot. So we'll come back and see if we can get into that position. And then so these kind of really fast rolling hammer-ons, it's this. Those notes just with that note on the B string in it as well. You can hear that ringing over the top. Okay, after that, this shape moves up. Two frets. And it's the same thing. Okay. And then it starts to fade out. We won't look at that bit because it's pretty much just a rehash. Of what he's done, what he's done before. So I want to take it back to the start. We'll play the whole thing once more slowly, and see if you can play along. If not, just take it bit by bit, glue it all together, phrase by phrase. What's really, really important is that your vibrato is really nice here, and your bends, the pitching of the bends, have got to be spot on because there's so many. Okay, so back to the start.
So again, one position for the most part, it goes a little bit out by the end. So much, so much information in that solo. It's, and it's so melodic, that's the thing about it. It's not shreddy, but you can sing that. that you know, it's like words written to a song. That's what makes it so good, in my opinion, anyway. Okay, guys, that's been it for me. Good luck with the practice. Hopefully you got something out of this lesson. I'll catch you next time.